All right, you guys, so this is part two of the two-part tutorial series of how to build a product launcher. If you haven't seen part one, go check it out right here. And that goes into how to use the product launcher and how I use it for my different shots like these. Right, guys, before we dive into this tutorial, I'm super excited to announce that I'm launching a product video course. Yep, a product video course. This course is jam packed with over 16 chapters that go into more detail than my YouTube tutorials. While YouTube tutorials are great for shorter form educational videos that squeeze hours and hours of filmmaking into 10 minutes or less, this product video course is where I dive into greater detail, making sure you have all the information you need for product filmmaking, big and small all in one accessible place. In this course, you're gonna learn everything from operating, pricing, growing your clientele, detailed steps of pre-production, how I come up with my ideas, everything I know in lighting, what types of equipment is needed, my production and post-production process, plus my LUTs that are not sold anywhere, and downloadable, customizable templates I use to book clients. Right now, I'm sharing an early bird pricing for $250 for a lifetime membership. Can you believe it? I can't. This includes everything above and more. The link to sign up is in the bio below. You'll get early access to the courses already released as well as save money when the course launches. If you want to get into product videography, this is the course for you. So in part two, I'm gonna show you guys how to build a product launcher and it's super, super easy. I brought my good friend Javier in and you can follow him on Instagram at Filmnamix. He has really cool content where he shows you how to fly FPV drones, but also a lot of cool stuff like this. And I hit him up because I wanted him to help me build a product launcher and make sure that I was doing it properly. And I've wanted to do this for a while now. And so we're just gonna walk through it, super simple. I have everything in a kit for you guys. It only costs $250, including the air compressor. So the next time you wanna build, say a second one, it's only gonna cost you $150 because the air compressor itself is $100, but I have everything listed out in the kit that we talk about and you can follow along. The kit is in the link in my bio. So let's dive in. All right, guys. So I'm here with Javier. We actually met on Instagram. He flies FPV drones and he does engineering. And I was telling him how I wanted to build this product launcher or pneumatic rod or air cylinder. And I wasn't very confident in my skills to put it together just because I didn't want to buy all the wrong things. So I talked to Javier and he assured me that it's actually pretty easy to build, but I wanted to bring in someone that's an expert to help me build it and show you guys how easy it is to do. So I'm not messing up on anything and that we can get this done. So here we have all the pieces laid out and Javier is going to talk me through and talk about how this all works and I'm gonna build it just to show you guys at home that it's anybody can do it. Cause if I can do it, anybody can do it. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Perfect. All right, so let's walk through this Javier. Show me what we're doing here. We want to start from the compressor, right? Okay. Um, once you find in the lead, you got it. And then um, usually when you bought uh, this type of compressor, there are uh, standard measures. So you will get a, a hose right and we need some way to connect from the compressor um, through the bulb right so that's when you know in parallel and metrics uh, units come into place right okay. uh, we have a mix of those uh, so basically uh, what I need you to do is that you take Teflon right Teflon tape yep and uh, we're gonna connect the hose through the first the first um, uh, Cooper plug. Perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this Teflon tape around, right? Yep. And that what that does, you guys, is it helps make sure when you have metal to metal contacts that you're not getting any leaks, right? Yeah. That's a, a one four inch uh, okay. hose, and um, you can you can get a pack on Amazon of um, all of these connectors. Um, so perfect. And we are gonna show you guys where you can buy everything obviously on the kit again. I feel like, you know what we're doing right now? I feel It reminds me of, um, what are those, uh, Alex, you might know this. What are those TV shows where like you just buy the buying, the shopping channel or whatever, right? You have to So now tool you're gonna need is you're gonna need a Allen wrench, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. 
Right? This is an Allen wrench? No. We don't know the technical terms here. What is, what is this? We're not, we're not See, mechanic. this is why anybody can build this is because I have no clue what we're doing here. So I just call it a wrench and that's what we're gonna, an adjustable wrench. Is that technical? Yes. Yeah, that'll work. Cool. So we're getting a little slip there. Yep. Okay. Do we need uh, Do we need two to tighten it more or do you think that's gonna be good? No, I think it's good. Okay, perfect. So in one side, actually, you can't connect it through the compressor though. Perfect. Um, Alex, do you, or let's just wait to connect it first. Is that okay? Yeah. Because we'll we'll have Alex film the compressor. The compressor is on the ground. All right, can we put the compressor up here? We can put the compressor up here, right? Yeah, cool. It's a little bit heavy, but. Don't worry, that's why I work out. Okay, so let's turn this. Here's our compressor. I don't want to hide all this stuff. Here we go. Compressor. Perfect. All right. So where are we plugging this into? So um, you are going to plug it in here. Uh, one of the things that you need to know when you bought a compressor uh, is that the tank, you know. Yep. Yeah. Should... Perfect. Yep. Yeah. This is there. So it, it has a little... Um, it has a little air gap here, so you open or close it. So as soon as you bought it, you take it out of the box, you you close the gap, and then you can connect it. Mm -hmm. Then once you connect it, you turn it on, it will be, you know, it will uh, start making a lot of noise. So watch out for, for people that might be worried about noise. And it will start filling the tank with air, right? And once the tank is at the right pressure, so for this cylinder, um, this has a maximum PSI of 120. So if we keep things around 90, it will be fine. So you just need to watch out uh, that you have 90, around 90, 100 PSI. And, and then you can uh, turn off the compressor. All the air will be compressed in this tank and this won't make any noise. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And we... then the whole reason for that valve, because uh, I actually do know compressors, here we go. And so that's pretty much here. That's to release, that's like the release, right? That's to bleed it out afterwards. So once you're done with it and you turn it off to not leave all that compressed air in there, you are gonna loosen that valve again. It's gonna be loud and it's gonna go and that's gonna let out all the air. And that's the whole reasoning for that. So yeah. that's just so you're uh, like, so you can close it off and it's, what is it called? The, is that a, a bleeding valve? Is that what it is? Yep. Perfect. Yep. Look at me, guys. I'm a full on engineer here. Yep. So we are not talking technical here. No so. technical terms. He's just going to say yes to whatever I say then, yeah. right? Perfect. All right. Can, can I put this back down? Do we need this anymore for right now? No, not for now. Perfect. We need awesome. this little guy though, but there we go. Sweet. So now um, we, um, we have an interesting problem here because when you bought the tubes, mm -hmm. actually, uh, you can notice that this is six millimeters, right? Mm -hmm. And then we need to connect it to um, our our bulb, right? So as you can see, when you try to connect uh, this guy in here, right? Um, you will notice that you, you have a, a, a difference. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's why in your part lids, you will find uh, this uh, one four, right? To one eight MI, and we will um, super easy. Yeah. So pretty much what we're using is this piece is going to fit onto your six millimeter tube right here, and then we have an adapter that connects right to here. Yeah. We're gonna screw these together, and this will fit onto the side of the air compressor hose. Easy peasy, right? Do we yeah. need to get Teflon tape on this too? Yeah. Uh, actually, I have one that is already uh, built. Oh, he already has one. This is a full-on cooking show. <laughs> the but yeah, turkey's out of the oven already. We already have one. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I bet people know how to connect yeah. to things. We already showed you. Yeah, cool. Um, awesome. So let's plug that one in then. Yeah. So in order to plug in, so I have you need to push it, down. Uh, push it up. Yeah. There Perfect. you go. Cool. And then let's plug this one in. Like so. Boom. Awesome. Locked in. Yeah. And so now. Okay. You need one of these guys. Perfect. 
Still, it's all going to be on the list. To. Oh, we have to wrap this one. Yeah. He took it off. He wanted to test me. I failed, guys. So. There you go. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. And then this little guy right here. I'm going to screw him on. I'm sorry. I'm leaning weird. We have a top-down camera today, so, you know, bird's eye view. Yeah, this this is... um. um so, uh, Cooper uh, kit that you bought, uh, you just need to make sure that you got um, one four inch for the size of of the the holes, right? Mm -hmm. And you will get you you will get two three of this. You will get the plugs to to you know to connect into the compressor. Perfect. So yes, for people that don't know. This is not how you connect it. You have to pull this little sheath off right here, pull it down like that, and that will connect it and then make sure it clicks in just like that. So that'll lock it in. And the same thing to get rid of it, you just pull that down. Because if you're not used to these kind of connections, you're just gonna be stabbing all day and it's not gonna, this is to make sure it doesn't shoot out. This is for high pressure hoses. So yep. there you go. Yeah, so now it's the interesting part, right? When you bought- This is uh, all interesting, so. Yeah. So when you bought um, this bulb, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Links and in Austin uh, kit. Um, these three pieces, actually these uh, five pieces comes uh, individual. So you just need to put Teflon and screw those, right? Uh, you won't have any issue there. Cool, let's, uh, let's just look at this really fast in the camera. So what he's saying is that you're just gonna have to take these little pieces right here, same how we've been connecting everything, is screw them on and it comes in this, comes with this, right? Yeah. So this is the layout that it, that it looks like, yeah. just for everybody. Here you go, perfect. Yeah. That is uh, one comment though. When you bought the bulb, uh, these two little guys uh, doesn't come. Okay. Uh, they come with another standards that you cannot adjust. So in, in the links, uh, in the kit, you will find these little guys that allow you to change the pressure when the air goes through the exhaust. So it allows you to control the speed of the road. Perfect. So this, okay. this you need to buy separately, but they are not too costly. Perfect. And so what he's saying is pretty much, this is pretty much like your remote right here of like how much power and pressure you can have going in and out. Right. And then yeah. these are the triggers. Is that what they yeah. are? These yeah. Uh, yeah, so these are, are not the triggers, these are just the exhaust. Okay. Uh, but the uh, the, this little bottom, blue bottom that you have here, uh, you use it to test, right? Okay. And this will allow you to, you know, activate um, the, the rope and the cylinder. Perfect. Uh, one interesting part that you might be wondering, it's about this part. W what is in here and, and why I put a 12 volts um, uh, power here, right? Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a power supply. And basically, uh, this will be in, a, in another tutorial if people like it, is that actually instead of um, Austin clicking every time to activate the, the catapult uh, or launcher, uh, we can control this with 12 volts. So later we can have a microcontroller that allows you to activate this uh, in a more uh, time manner yeah. and, and plan manner. So you don't have to have an extra person just sitting behind, like behind underneath yeah. the table pressing the button. But this is an extra cost. You don't have to do this. You can, you can make it work perfectly fine just with this right here. So this is an extra piece. We'll have the option and we'll make it, we'll have another kit that says optional for all these other things for the extra cost. Cause we want to keep this as cheap as possible so anybody has access to do it. So this works just fine. Um, cool, so what's next? Yeah, so now that you have your bulb, we, we needed to spend some time in this part because this is one of the most important parts. Uh, yeah, you don't need to worry about the connecting anything here, uh, just this part. Now we need to you know, take the two airs uh, from here to here. Basically, when you, bought, when you get the, the tubes, you just could it, could it uh, at the distance you want, and then mm -hmm. you just connect Perfect. the two. Okay. So we're gonna take both of these tubes that we cut. These are pre-cut, yeah. obviously, and then plug them in. Yeah. Plug them in, and then does it matter? This is my question. Okay. So after I plug them in, does it matter which one goes? Does A have to go to a certain part, and B has to go to a certain part? It matters 
it, when you put when you activate and turn off the compressor uh, it matters if the initial position it's up or down okay that that's what matters uh, so now uh, before we connect uh, we need to exclude these two little guys that actually comes with the yeah. cylinder so this comes with the pneumatic air cylinder just these little pieces right here do i need to put teflon on there or does it look yes a little bit you always want to put teflon because it allows uh it doesn't allow the air to go out uh and Perfect. pressure as much pressure as you you have the better so Perfect. yeah all right so now we've put the teflon tape on we're just going to screw these in right yes perfect sorry we have uh, our camera operator alex over there crawling around everything he's getting back into place but it's okay because we can cut to different cameras so i'm going to screw both of these on easy peasy just like that guys tighten them yes Cool. There you go. Easy. Pretty much we've only been using this tool and I'm assuming probably like some like some good scissors to cut the tubes, right? So yes, that's pretty much it. Easy. All right. So plug them in. Yes. A go to the front. You said it doesn't matter. I'm just going to plug them in like that because that helps with my OCD. So <laughs> perfect. Yeah. It, it matters just the, the initial position when you put air. So awesome. now what we have to do is just test it. So Perfect, so we're gonna turn on the air compressor. Um, we'll grab some shots of that and then we'll come back and we'll test it. Okay, so we have got the compressor up to 90 PSI, right? and we turned it off. We didn't want to show that part. It would have been really loud when recording. So now we got it. And so here it is, right? And we have the trigger. I'm going to hold it and we're going to press it. <laughs> so what you can do is imagine connecting a product to it and saying you want it to pop up behind the table, right? Or we can use this, which Javier has 3D printed and you don't actually have to use this. There's a lot of different things. This is just, again, we're gonna be giving different options. He 3D printed this cone, which we can screw onto right here, and then we're gonna screw it on, and we can put stuff inside of it and launch it. So now let's screw this on, right? Just yep. screw it on. Cool, and then we have something we wanna launch. I found in my handy dandy storage, a bunch of these plastic coins that I used for my crack and shoot that I really only ended up using one, but you know, everything comes back around and we're gonna launch this right at Alex, I guess. So I'm just gonna stuff some stuff in here. So imagine like you had your product sitting if we had like, for example, a treasure chest and you wanted to have things shoot out of it, we could drill a hole and then literally have this boom explode out. So Javier, I'm gonna have you do the honors and I'm gonna, we're gonna launch this at uh, I can call it. Do you you can... want, oh, you want me to do the honors? All right, ready Alex? Go. And three, two, one. Perfect. And there you go. All right, guys. So that's it for how to build a product launcher. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you guys build some. Please share, like, comment, subscribe. And if you build your own, show me the shots that you get. And until next time.